Hey guys, so I'm a consultant, DevOps, CI CD pipelines. I've been working with GitLab on different client placements. And one thing that comes up often is how to do the path to production. How do you go from dev to staging to production? I think I found a good way and I'm gonna share that with you. And uh, let's, let's just go for it, huh? So I'm, I'm gonna create a blank project on GitLab and I'm just gonna walk you through how to create a CI CD uh, in, in GitLab. Oops, let's call this YouTube um, Devo. And uh, let's go for it, create project. So to begin with, you go on the side here, let's maybe make it a little bit bigger. Well, not too big. CI/CD editor. That's where you go. And the great thing about this GitLab editor is that you get this like validator, which is super helpful. And it starts you with a, a kind of a template that's um, a little bit bewildering, I think. Uh, but the important thing is to note that the stages by default, and they don't need to actually be uh, named here, are build test, deploy. And here you can see in their template, they have a build, they have a test, uh, two tests for some reason. Um, what, okay, one's a unit test, one's a linter, that's quite typical. And then it goes straight into like the environment production, which a bit, it's a bit weird. So let's just start from the absolute beginning. So as I mentioned, you don't actually need to, to define the stages, you, it's just implied. So let's, let's start with the build and that, that you mark that with the stage build. And what happens, what do you do? I mean, if you've looked at my other videos, you, you do a make. So I'm just gonna echo, because this is just kind of fake. Um, and then a test, a similarly stage uh, test, and you would, you would typically do a make test, right? Now this is the, um, the part of production, that's the topic for today, right? How do you do the parts of production. How do you do uh, like a deployment to dev? Okay, first off, it's pretty important to have this uh, environment set here, dev, and this will, you'll see this in the deployments later. And then let's pretend that it's something like, <clears throat> uh, let's uh, like, uh, okay, let's uh, deploy uh, to dev. Okay, so let's just run that and hopefully I got it all right. You can check, pipeline syntax is correct. You can also like visualize it. So we just have a build test deploy. And I might have to edit this a bit because it's a bit boring to watch this work. Um, but here you go. That's your very, very basic, don't be ashamed, getting started with GitLab CI CD. Build, test, deploy. So once you've committed that, you'll see, you should see it run a pipeline. So by default, GitLab has this shared runner type concept and it's gonna be running on the, one of their shared runners. And you typically have to wait a little bit. So what we have here is a CI CD pipeline to deploy to dev, okay? Now we want to deploy to staging and production. How do we do that? So the way to do that is using tags. My approach here does have the drawback in the sense that I run a build test every every time. And in fact, for deploying to your dev, you might want to add a rule that it only deploys if it hits your main branch. I can show that to you in a bit. Now, one problem I find with developers or people working with DevOps is that they're a little bit embarrassed to iterate on the GitLab CI. They fear that if they're gonna add things here and, and commit, it's gonna create a noisy Git history. There is, a cool way to get around that. <laughs> and that's simply to have another uh, Git repo and you just reference the build of that other Git repo. So you, you keep your, your Git history pristine, but it does have trade-offs in the sense that like, now your your build is controlled by another repo and, and if something changes in the other repo, it's not immediately clear to you, right? But let me um, just show you that method Anyway, so here is the method, it's correct. And this P2P demo, 
I'm cheating, aren't I? <laughs> so let's go to the P2P demo and, and have a look at, at that repo, which is public, by the way. Link's in the description below. I called it GitLab CI just to make sure that the editor still works and all that stuff. So here you can see I've extended the deploy um, stages. I find when I go to client placements that they have really overly complicated deploy setups, like they have manual steps and these needs relationships. It doesn't need to be that way. You can just keep everything stage deploy. You, as I mentioned, keep the environment um, mapped to you know the, the, the stages, like dev, staging, keeping them three letters to, to make my life a lot easier. As I mentioned, you probably want to keep a rule to only de uh, deploy dev if it's, uh, if it's on your main branch. Now, this is the interesting thing here, is now that you only deploy to uh, staging if there's a staging tag. And similarly, you only deploy to production if there's a, if there's a production tag. You might be thinking like, oh, well, any developer could, to, could push a tag and then accidentally push to staging. You know, where is the, where's, the, where's the safety rails or guardrails and things like this? In, in the CICD here, you can uh, set up a rule, I believe. Oh, my gosh. Where is it? It's not here. It's over here. You can set up protected tags in the sense that only maintainers or in the maintainer group can can can, can sort of set a staging tag, uh, something like that. Only maintainers can do that. So you you can protect your higher environments. I mean that's that's critical uh, requirement uh, on, on with clients typically. Similarly, you can also um, mark your, your deployment runners as, um, as protected too. But let me quickly demonstrate that this is working. So I committed this change. So we had the early pipeline run that went fine and we just had the pipeline run just now and that went fine. And you can see here, we're essentially deploying this commit to dev. So let me just show you how you would do a, a commit to staging. You can just do it all in the UI, which is pretty handy. You can go tag, new tag, and I like to keep it uh, like stage name and then the date. So today is 14th, oh, I remembered. So if I create that tag, and since I'm a maintain maintainer of this of this repo, I'm allowed to create that tag. And that will trigger a pipeline run for a deployment to staging. As you can see here, there's a tag and it should already give you some indication that's going to deploy to staging. That's how you do the path to production, tags. You tag for staging, you test in the staging environment. Once that test has been done, you tag it again and deploy that to production. And deployments here, you can see, you can get like a nice history of what's been deployed in each environment. Because you might want to do several deployments in staging before you, you know, cut a release into production. I hope that was clear to you guys how to do the path to production using tags, how to protect them, and uh, some tricks with uh, the include and, and such and so forth. Please like the video, please comment below, please check the links in the description, and um, see you next time guys, bye.